Recently, there have been several changes to the official Adventist position on abortion, so in this video we will review those changes so that everyone can know whether or not the Seventh-day Adventist Church still continues to support abortion. So let's review and summarize the situation. The Adventist Church is a global church, but in 1970, 1971, abortion was accepted so that hospitals in North America, primarily the USA, could profit from legalized abortion in Adventist hospitals. Church leaders knew that the world church and even American Adventists would not accept this, so they used misleading euphemisms and kept the pro-abortion policy a secret. In the late 1980s, however, the secret was exposed because Catholics and Evangelicals were protesting at Adventist hospitals in America over their practice of abortion on demand. When this was covered in international media, like the Washington Post, Adventist church members became more aware of the problem and following outrage and complaining from laity, church leaders promised to address the issue. This is all documented in a research paper that was presented at the Adventist International Conference on Abortion in 1988 and later published right here in the Adventist Church's official journal, Ministry. In 1992, a new set of official, quote, guidelines was voted and approved by the Adventist church leadership, but it still contained the exact same mother's health loophole used in Roe versus Wade and Doe versus Bolton to justify abortion on demand. The same mother's health loophole used in 1970 and also in 1971 was used again in 1992. It's also critical to understand that when the international media blew blew the lid off the secret in the 1980s, Adventist church leaders recognized that Adventist lay members would not accept abortion. So they became very creative and began claiming that abortion was a religious liberty issue, just like keeping the Sabbath. And they even appealed to the Supreme Court of the United States, claiming that anti-abortion laws to protect children from violence were a violation of religious, religious freedom. I made an entire video about that right here. In 1992, when the new position was adopted, it still contained the abortion on demand loophole, but now it was couched in and surrounded by claims that it was a matter of freedom, individual conscience personal freedom, religious liberty, and freedom of choice. Despite the fact, the fact, that not one Adventist leader, president, scholar, administrator, or theologian ever produced even one scripture why killing children is a matter of religious liberty, Adventist church leaders dogmatically insisted for over 25 years that the church's position was biblical. However, in recent years, with renewed and increased agitation, church leaders decided to rescind the 1992 position and vote in a new position in 2019 titled Statement on the Biblical View of Unborn Life and Its Implications for Abortion. Those who are aware of the history know the importance of looking for the loophole and so when this document was discussed by the executive committee at the church's annual council, there was much suspicion over the vague phrases in section 6 like fatal prospects to who, the mother or the child, and what exactly were birth anomalies? Why is abortion a matter of conscience, but not racism and tithing? Why are slavery, why is theft and rape not also matters of conscience? The claim that deliberately killing children was still defined as a matter of conscience is again not explained. And how does Romans 8 justify killing children, and how come nobody in church leadership even attempted to explain this verse. This section raised much discussion and was challenged especially by Doug Batchelor, but top church leaders anticipating this objection then promised that an official quote protocol would be published at the beginning of the following year, 2020, to interpret this section. Top church leader and assistant to the president, Mark Finley, rushed to quiet any type of criticism and published this video here where he claimed that suspicious people and critics did not really understand the document and he claimed that section six would not, it would not open the door for abortion. Let's listen. This statement does not open the door for abortion at whim or choice. I think point number six was the most discussion, and I think the reason for that is it was misunderstood by many 
as opening a door for abortion. However, seven months after the promised date without any news or announcements, the church leadership quietly rolled out their new protocol where completely contrary, completely contrary to all of the promises made by Finley and other leaders, the new protocol did in fact contain again the exact same mental health loophole to allow elective abortion specifically within Adventist institutions, which is the strongest, most undeniable proof that again in 2020, Adventist leadership are continuing to use vague language to manipulate and deceive the church. People swore up and down. We were told repeatedly that this would not open the door and that is exactly what leaders did. However, unlike 1970 and 1971 and 1992, Adventist church members angered over the continual deceptions were now watching closely and when the protocol was released, there was an immediate backlash and top church leadership deleted the protocol and hurriedly posted a revised version. So right now, after all of this history, the Adventist church has the official 2019 position with a loophole, but that loophole is supposed to be explained by a protocol. But when the protocol was exposed and then deleted, church leaders posted a revised protocol, which only repeats the same vague phrases and gives us no definitions. The deleted protocol had many very specific definitions, especially for therapeutic and elective abortion. But right now, the current revised version, the phrases are again used, but notice this, no definitions are given. So nobody really knows what these words mean, and that's on purpose. When Adventist church leaders think that they can get away with it, they will give you definitions. But if they have to retreat, they will leave you with the vague language and take their definitions with them. That's how the game is played. That's how it's been played for over 50 years. Everything about this is dark and evil and deceptive and Machiavellian. There has never been any honesty or transparency whatsoever. It has been continual dishonesty and lying for the last 50 years. And church leaders just revealed just a few weeks ago that absolutely nothing has changed. And that's just the position. Adventist lawmakers who publicly support and legislate the most extreme pro-abortion laws to kill children are honored as keynote speakers for the Adventist Church's Religious Liberty Department. Notorious abortionist Edward Allred, who boasted of killing over 250,000 children, is listed as a distinguished ambassador of the church's flagship medical institution. He is honored as an inspiration and as an example forever, forever, to Adventist students in Adventist universities. Adventist church leadership have never ever issued any apology for this and they will not because they believe that killing children is a sacred religious right that must be protected. And the current president, Ted Wilson, on multiple occasions publicly affirmed this point. And when Adventists say that something is a matter of conscience or religious liberty, this is defined as a matter of worship. This is exactly why the Adventist church appealed to the Supreme Court of the United States to block anti-abortion legislation. The 40 to 50 million little children who are brutally killed every year, the Adventist Church argued to allow this violence to continue. Furthermore, Adventist leaders argued to the state of Maryland that Catholics should not be allowed to build a hospital because Catholics don't allow abortions. When you honor pro-abortion lawmakers, when you set up as your ambassador the most notorious abortionists, when you petition a secular government to forbid Catholics to build a hospital because they won't kill innocent children, not only are you very pro-abortion, you are an enemy to a healthy civil society. When the Washington Post saw this and published an article blasting the church for its hypocrisy and claiming that Adventist hospitals were performing elective abortion, not one, not one church leader offered any apology and they will again, they will never apologize because for them, killing your children is an act of worship that must be protected. Former Loma Linda theologian Siro Tsoratukun publicly signed his name to a declaration that demands abortion as a human right. This religious declaration was the idea of a public relations 
director for Guess Which Organization, Planned Parenthood. She left Planned Parenthood to start a, quote, religious organization that specifically works to target and force churches and church institutions to accept the tenets of the sexual revolution. They work constantly demanding that no theology school receive accreditation unless they accept pro-abortion and other sodomite values. I say former theologian because Dr. C. Dort was recently appointed as a president of an Adventist university in Southeast Asia. If you support slavery or tobacco or if you support alcohol, you will never be appointed anywhere in the Adventist church. But if you demand abortion, you will be appointed as a president to influence thousands of youth in our own schools. It's important, however, to stop and remember that as of right now, there are at least 21 million Adventist church members worldwide, the majority of which are in Latin America, Africa, and throughout Asia. Abortion was brought into the church by the North Americans, but it's their influence that keeps abortion in the church. The overwhelming majority do not support abortion and remain oblivious precisely because of the misleading language and euphemisms, the misinformation and doublespeak. For example, the new revised version says, Adventist healthcare institutions prize, oh, they prize human life and do not perform elective abortion. And of course, they give no definitions because in the deleted version, they switched definitions and said that therapeutic abortions were acceptable for reasons of mental health. It's constant trickery and verbal sleight of hand. They switch out and they replace therapeutic or elective or any phrase that will allow them to continue to support abortion while at the same time giving the impression to gullible church members all oh, that we don't do this so the answer is yes it is now September 2020 and the Adventist Church continues to officially support the premeditated violent killing of little children. This is of course evil and it is demonic. There's more that can be said, but that's just a summary. If you want to learn more, check out my other videos and see the links down below. Thank you for watching.